Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'm going to discuss the aspects of the internal market bill, which is the uh, Brexit bill that is causing all the hoo-ha because, of course, it breaches international law, even with the concessions that Boris Johnson has put in for his backbenchers. But there are other aspects to it as well. And what I want to do in this video is to discuss, in particular, why Scottish politicians are especially upset with it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So essentially, the internal market bill, there are three objections to it from people who have actually read it. The first, of course, is that it breaches international law. It seeks to rewrite the withdrawal agreement. We've discussed that at length and we're going to have to carry on as well because that aspect of it, even though Boris Johnson is now watering it down, is still there. The second aspect of it is that there are there's a clause in there which makes it very difficult to call the government to account. So if, for example, you are unfairly impacted by any action that a minister takes as a result of this bill, you won't be able to take them to court. Now, normally, of course, the government should not be above the law. And if the government breaks the law, it should be possible for people to take the government to court. This, of course, has happened quite a lot. So you can also understand why Boris Johnson, who doesn't like being taken to court and told he's as guilty as sin, uh, would seek to avoid that. But he doesn't avoid it by not breaking the law. He instead seeks to avoid it by saying, yeah, you can't take me to court, which is what this bill does as well. But then there's the third, and actually, really, the worst aspect of it, and I say the worst aspect of it, purely because it's the sort of thing that would absolutely sail through the Lord's no problem. At the moment, the way the bill is at the moment, unless there are further waterings down, you would think that by the time it gets to the House of Lords, it will not pass through. Now, whether that means that Boris Johnson will accept that it won't pass through and do it anyway, or whether he will seek to water it down so that it will pass through and take in all of the really terrible things, I don't know. Now, although I'll say that, that Scotland are particularly upset with this part of it, it's not because Scotland are especially damaged by it, because the whole of the UK is. Um, and I've, I've sort of said this to a couple of people that have, have raised it. The reason why Scottish politicians are making a bigger fuss than others about it is, is twofold. One, the dominant force in Scottish politics is Scottish nationalists, which uh, and obviously they're always going to seek to, to identify a gulf between what Scotland needs and what Scotland has been provided for in terms of the, the national leadership, Boris Johnson's government, which is fair enough, not criticising that. But the other thing as well that I would say is because devolution in Scotland is more advanced than in any other part of the Union, England has piss poor devolution. We have a few elected mayors, that's about it. Wales ha now has a, a parliament, uh, did have an assembly, it's now a full parliament. So that's getting there. But again, it's not, it hasn't really started flexing its muscles properly because it's, it's relatively new. Northern Ireland is an assembly, they've got control over certain matters but there's other matters where they just I mean there's there's half of the the assembly just wants to take their lead from the government in Westminster anyway so Scotland has by far the most advanced form of devolution which means that any attempts to sort of take that power away or water it down will be more keenly felt and the internal market bill even if you take away the clauses that breach the withdrawal agreement even if you take away the clause that says you can't hold the government to account. Because actually, do you know what? That's the part Scotland really don't care about. Because if, if you put a clause in, a bill, a Westminster bill, that says, oh, if we break the law, you can't take us to court, Scotland will just look at you and go, yeah, we'll just take you to the court of session, mate, uh, which is the Scottish Constitutional Court. Westminster can't touch that. And, um, but... The rest of the internal market bill is all about who makes decisions. Basically, these are decisions that used to be taken uh, on, you know, on our behalf as part of the EU. They took place in Brussels. Not the unelected bureaucrats, of course, our own representatives as, as long as others. But those powers are now being repatriated. But instead of Boris Johnson going, oh, right. Oh, and there's some there's some education powers here. Right. Oh, education is dissolved, uh, devolved. <clears throat> so... 
here are the powers for Scotland and here are the powers for Wales and here are the powers for Northern Ireland and here are our powers. No, no, they're just going, no, it's all mine. Same with health, same with everything. It's just mine. Hence the term power grab. Now, Ian Blackford of the SNP uh, raised a couple of questions as he gets to do every week at PMQs as the leader of the second largest opposition party. And I said at the time when I didn't I didn't go through them in my normal PMQs video. And I'll explain why in that one. But I said at the time he asked one very good question and then one very bad question. Actually, the bad question elicited what I thought was the worst answer from Boris Johnson. But the first question was quite brilliant because it really got for any casual observer. And this is I think this is the the core of a good question at PMQs, because normally a good question is you ask the prime minister something which, you know, maybe the prime minister didn't expect and they have to give the answer. That's not how Boris Johnson operates. He just won't. He won't answer the question. He didn't answer this question. So now the modus operandum for asking questions at Prime Minister's Questions is to expose to the country that the Prime Minister is either being evasive or lying about something. Without actually calling him a liar in the house, because you're not allowed to do that. So what Ian Blackford did is he first of all quoted something that Boris Johnson had said in the past about devolution, describing it as a mess and unjust. So again, um, just as people at the moment are reminding us that Michael Gove was dead against the Good Friday Agreement and therefore, oh, so bit of a coincidence that his actions then are jeopardising the Good Friday Agreement. So now we're, Ian Blackford is pointing to the fact that Boris Johnson is not going to defend devolution. He might say that he will uh, and he say all of these things he's doing that are actually working against devolution, he's saying are actually going to strengthen devolution. It's a bit like when he does things to break the law. Or I'm actually doing it to protect the law. Hilarious. Um... So he's making it crystal clear that Boris Johnson is on record as saying he does not agree with devolution. So then he asked a question. Now, technically, he asked two questions here. It was a little bit cheeky, but that's all right. I'm OK with cheeky. Uh, he first of all said, does he does the prime minister think that devolution in Scotland is unjust? That was the question. Do you think devolution in Scotland is unjust? Yes or no question. Then he says, and where does he think decisions on issues such as health and education, he listed a few others as well, but from my point of view, health and education are by far the more important ones. He said, where does he think these sorts of decisions for Scotland should be taken? Scotland's Parliament or in Westminster? Like I said, it's two questions, a bit cheeky. And, and if the Prime Minister has stood up and says, well, you've asked two questions there, um, but you're still going to ask me another, I'll answer one of them. Um, then I would have thought, OK, that's all right, because he was being cheeky asking too. But he didn't answer either of them. Didn't answer either of them. Now, what Boris Johnson did say is he suggested for a start that in 2014, there was a referendum where the people of Scotland rejected further devolution, which, of course, is not true. That was the referendum for independence. That's not the same thing as devolution. Um, he also tried to say that... Ian Blackford could vote for further devolution in the Internal Market Bill because he's trying to say that the Internal Market Bill gives greater powers to Scotland. But in reality, it doesn't. Now, this is where you could actually have a bit of a debate because technically there are parts of the Internal Market Bill that will give Scotland powers that it did, the Scottish Parliament powers that it didn't previously have, which is true because, like I said, in terms of those powers from the EU, a couple of them just for show are going to the Scottish Parliament. And it is just for show. It's purely so that Boris Johnson can point to a part of the bill and say, well, look, that's a power you didn't have before and you now get it. But in reality, the fact of the matter is that as far as decisions in the UK go, matters on things like health and education for Scotland take place entirely in Scotland. And that is not going to be the case if the internal market bill goes through. So... You can debate the point, but I'm going to take the view that beforehand, all decisions on education, for example, uh, that were that, that affected Scotland would take place in Scotland. And now that's not going to be the case. Therefore, I would say that's a reversal of devolution. That's not an obvious. I am not a Scottish nationalist. Good God. The opposite. Um, so it, it's a reverse of that. And he also then dropped another bollock because he said 
that Ian Black, because he was talking about the fact that the referendum was a once in a generation event, and I said that, and the, the honourable member himself, or the right honourable member, I think it is William Blackford, sorry, get it right, the right honourable member uh, also agreed that it was a once in a generation event, at which point Ian Blackford was shaking his head. Um, but it was a very good question because this is the ideal sort of question. What it is, you're asking, I mean, he technically asked two questions, but they were simple questions and they were questions that Boris Johnson didn't answer. Now, Ian Blackford can then point to the fact that he was asked simple questions and didn't answer them. And what is a reason for not answering a simple question? Because the answer is not a good answer. So does Boris Johnson think devolution in Scotland is unjust? He didn't answer yes or no, and he could have done very easily. If he'd have answered yes, obviously he's exposing himself as someone who is trying to trash devolution. If he says no, then it'd be pointed out that he's lying because you said this. Um, so he didn't answer it at all. The fact that he didn't answer it at all makes Johnson look bad. Good question. Second one, does he think decisions on issues such as health and education, blah, 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 and Scotland should be taken as Scotland's Parliament or Westminster? Didn't answer that question either. Again, what can be the possible reason? Anyone... I'm a unionist. I know that these matters should be taking place in Scotland. I want full devolution. Some people call it, Gordon Brown recently was call it like a federal approach. If you want to call it that, fine. There's an awful lot of... The term federal can hide all sorts of creepy crawlies. Um, but certainly, I all I want a national government for is to take care of things that deal with our place in the world. When it comes to decisions on the ground inside the country they should be taken on a more regional basis we should have um, the scottish parliament taking the scottish government taking those decisions for matters pertaining to scotland same thing for Wales, same thing for norland and same thing for different regions of england we should have the same sort of thing in england england's much bigger more people uh, and quite frankly we in the north of england don't really want to be pissed about by those in the south of england either in fact i've always said it before if the union has to break up it's a shame it would have to break up along historical lines because I believe that if there were a vote, then the bulk of people in the north of England would actually choose to go with Scotland and st stay with the rest of England, quite frankly. But there it is. Um, so then the second question. Now, this was the bad question, but it was also the question that elicited an answer from Boris Johnson that made me go, what? Did, did, did you mean to say that? Because I don't think you meant to say that. So what he said was, he said, First of all, he, correct, he, said, he corrected the record. He said, I have never once said it's a once in a generation event and the Prime Minister should withdraw that. Because it is true that certain people did call it a once in a generation event. Ian Blackford did not necessarily say that. And the fact he's now stood up and said that um, means that Johnson, you know, he didn't withdraw the comment as far as I could tell. But then onto his actual question, he said, as usual, the Prime Minister is all over the place. He doesn't know what's in his own Brexit deal, alluding to the way Ed Miliband stitched him up earlier in the week. And he doesn't know what's in the internal market bill, again, alluding to, to Miliband's uh, trashing of him. Um, and he says, I'll tell him, Clause 46 allows this Tory government to bypass Scotland's Parliament and take decisions on the NHS education and, and so on. Now, that point's fine. That's OK. Um, but the problem was he then went into nationalist mode of, of independence or the rest of it. It says, all a blatant power grab. Uh, all know what Tory backbenchers are saying behind closed doors. The Prime Minister is incompetent, which is true, by the way. Um, not just that he's incompetent, that his backbenchers are saying that privately. He can't govern and they want him away before the next election. Will Johnson's legacy be breaking international law and breaking this failing union? Went off on a rant. Now, the reason why that wasn't a good question is because it does not elicit an answer from Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson can just get up and grandstand himself and no one can say you don't seem to have answered the question because it's a facetious question. Everyone understands you don't have to answer those. Um, the first question was superb. The second question <clears throat> would have absolutely had his supporters cheering from the rafters. They'll be saying to me in the comments now, Phil, Phil, no, he was making good points. That's all it appeals to. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with asking a question that gets your own side cheering, but your own side is going to vote for you anyway. You don't have to win those over. Now, if you can combine a question that gets a casual observer uh, looking at it and going, oh, as well as cheering your supporters, all to the better. But the priority has to be exposing Boris Johnson. This question did not expose him. But I will say he exposed himself. Not literally, that's not allowed in Westminster. Um, <clears throat> 
Boris Johnson got up with a cheeky smile on his face. And I thought, oh God, what's he going to say now? Uh, and that's an also a sign of a bad question. If Boris Johnson gets up smiling, you've messed up. Now, the first question made up for it. It was a good question. But the second, don't let Boris Johnson get up smiling. I want him up looking angry, perturbed, confused, gormless, not happy. And he said, uh, I'm not quite sure, Mr. Speaker, from that uh, question, whether the, the right honourable member is for or against union. And I was thinking to myself, yeah. And then he said, based on his hostility to me, I think he's in favour of it. And I thought, because huh? he's trying to be cheeky, but I'm thinking, hang on a minute. OK, let's break this down. So <clears throat> he's identifying that Ian Blackford is hostile to Boris Johnson. Yes, he is. Fair enough. And he's using that as evidence that Boris, that, that Ian Blackford is in favour of union, which is a facetious answer. But then, to be fair, it's a, to a facetious question. And then he thinks, hang on a minute. So if someone was in favour of union, like I am, if someone were in favour of union and they were hostile towards Boris Johnson, as I would be, what does that mean about Boris Johnson? Why would I, as a unionist, be hostile to Boris Johnson? Because Boris Johnson is a threat to the union. That's why I would be hostile towards him. So is Boris Johnson, by suggesting that being hostile towards Boris Johnson means that he's a unionist, because Boris Johnson, he's acknowledging that he himself is a threat to the union? I'm not really sure that's what he meant. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure how... Asking a question that didn't really require an answer got Boris Johnson admitting that he's a threat to the union. So he sort of he fluked that one, I think. But anyway, those are, those are my thoughts are on the issue there. That's really what the issue is. Partic partic why Scotland in particular are making more of a fuss about the internal market bill. But in fact, everyone should be. It's just, as I say, Scotland, because they've enjoyed more devolution than other parts of the UK, feel a power grab more keenly but in actual fact that power grab exists everywhere there is nowhere that it is not taking place um but those are my thoughts let me know yours in the comments below hope you found the video interesting if you did don't forget to click the like button if you'd like to support the channel further please also click the patreon link for details and until next time i'll see you later